Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're doing another listener request uh, question uh, from Sam Phillips. He commented, could you do a Miles Garrett breakdown? And yes, let's do Miles Garrett. Uh, Miles Garrett, of course, is the uh, number overall pass rusher uh, in this last draft class. Uh, he's one of those guys where there was some controversy with him over a lot of different types of things that I think were kind of unjustified uh, or at least people who kind of lack a knowledge of uh, market share production, defensive market share production, stuff like that. Uh, so before we get into to Miles Garrett in terms of his analytics profile, uh, let's go over just a few things for those that are familiar with the work that I do. Uh, defensive market share production is where you take an individual defensive statistic and you divide it by the team total statistics. So, uh, for example, if a pass rusher has five sacks on a team that has 50 sacks, uh, then that pass rusher had uh, about 10% uh, solo tackle, well, not solo tackle, but uh, sack market share. Uh, and what you do with that number is you take that individual defensive statistic and you compare it to every single player since 1989 in terms of what their performances were in terms of sack market share, tackle for loss market share, solo tackle market share, and then you're able to see, okay, where the breakdowns are. You know, where did the most of the all pro players produce in terms of market share production? Where did most of the Pro Bowl players produce in terms of market share production? And of course, where did all the players kind of look like in terms of tackle for loss production? So you get a good feel of how productive they were, how much impact they had on their individual teams, because that's the biggest thing. You're trying to see who is actually a dominant football player. Who is making the most impact on their individual team uh, based on their team. And uh, that's a lot of what defensive market share production is. We're also going to look at athleticism data. Uh, again, explosive lower body strength score is the vertical and broad jump measured against mass density. Uh, that, of course, takes into account your explosiveness. You know, how explosive you are in terms of your hips and your ankles. Uh, the more explosive you are, the more powerful you are in terms of your hips and your ankles, the farther you jump. Uh, there's a lot of sort of biomechanical, other biomechanical sort of stuff involved with this, but that's kind of the basics in terms of what explosiveness means and what that score means. Uh, we're going to look, look at the speed score. That is a 40-yard dash measured against mass density, which is pretty simply how fast are they for their size. If you have a pass rusher that's 265 pounds and runs a 4 5 40, versus a pass rusher that's 245 pounds and runs a 4540. That guy who was 265 pounds and ran a 4540 is much more interesting, or at the very least, it, it says a lot about that player that he's 20 pounds heavier and runs the same 40 yard dash in terms of speed for size. Uh, and that's basically what speed score is. Uh, we're also gonna look at the uh, flexibility score, which is a short shell slash three cone measured against mass density, and I'll get into why Miles Garrett has a bit of a blind spot when it comes to that, and ultimately come to some sort of conclusions about what he looks like, you know, what is his potential at the NFL level based on the data coming out of college, and we'll get into all that kind of stuff, but uh, with all this stuff out of the way, let's get to Miles Garrett in terms of what he looked like in terms of college production, and of course NFL, well not NFL production, but um, athleticism. So starting out with Miles Garrett, uh, Miles Garrett's production, he had an 89.45 solo tackle market share production score. Based on my data since 1989, uh, he hit every single threshold you can imagine in terms of a multiple opera, multiple Pro Bowl player. Uh, the the bot and these are the bottom end thresholds uh, for these types of players. So he pretty much surpassed any sort of threshold. So he has at least some potential, you know, all pro potential based on solo tackle market share. Uh, his sack mark is 83.14 out of 100. Uh, pretty much 100% of multiple All-Pro players uh, since 1989 had at least an 84.67 sack mark share score. Uh, Miles Garrett has a 83.14. Uh, 
but it's within the margin of error. I'm not going to like talk bad about Miles Garrett because he was about a point ish away from hitting that threshold. So um, it's within the sort of relative, I mean, it's within the relative sort of area. So I'm not going to knock him that much. He didn't technically hit the all pro threshold in terms of sack market share, but it's close enough uh, to where uh, it wouldn't be surprising if. He has a lot of other positives to him that he could end up surpassing this. Uh, and then, of course, uh, he pretty much hits Pro Bowl threshold as well. Tackle for loss market share has a 77.29 out of 100, uh, which, again, the all-pro threshold 78.14, but 77.29 versus 78.14, not that big of a difference between those gaps. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not even to say that he would be an outlier. It's just a matter of the fact that he's so close to the threshold that uh, it, it may be that the threshold is just a little bit lower uh, than uh, than what's indicated. So um, I, it's not something to just rag on him. I mean, if you want to get technical about his production, uh, Miles Garrett simply has Pro Bowl production potential with the potential to also be an all-pro uh, production guy as well due to his sack market share and TFL market share being so close to the all pro threshold so he, there's nothing wrong with his production uh, this is his market share production um, this takes the best individual season uh, this is not about what they did over their career uh, I'm still working on a lot of career data but I have not really had any issues with taking the best individual season that a player puts up and using that as a framework for um, how they do, especially since career would really speak to injury history and stuff like that, um, which is something I haven't really gotten into a ton of yet. Uh, but the bottom line is, is there was really nothing wrong with Miles Garrett's production, despite having a down year, just like Joey Bosa had a down year, just like Jadavion Clowney had a down year. Like, we need to get over the fact that some defensive ends that enter the draft have sort of a down year when they come into the draft. I mean... Uh, I, it's just this narrative that keeps popping up. It popped up of Clowney, you know, oh, well, he's not as productive in his last year, so he's going to be a bust. Or with Joey Bosa, oh, he's not as productive in his last year, so he's going to be a bust. And then we did the same thing with Miles Garrett. Eventually, this narrative needs to die. <laughs> um, either you prove that you're a Pro Bowl or All Pro caliber player in your sophomore season, or you don't. And at least in Miles Garrett's case, he at least proved that. In prior seasons, uh, and then we get to his athleticism data. Uh, based on his athleticism, uh, he has a 99.43 explosive lower body strength score and a 96.47 speed score. Uh, based on my data since the 1999 NFL draft class, in terms of athleticism data, he hits every single sort of threshold that you could imagine here as well. In terms of All Pro, he hits the sort of explosiveness and speed of All Pro player, and of course, the explosiveness and speed for a Pro Bowl player. The only issue with Miles Garrett, Miles Garrett's profile, is his flexibility testing. Uh, he did not do the short shell. He did not do the three cone. And the fact that I don't have the short shell and three cone really puts a doubt in terms of how to project him. It's a blind spot in the data. You know, whenever um, to, to compare it to driving, you know, you have a blind spot. You have something that you can't see, uh, and as a result, because you can't see it it's kind of hard to really project this guy 100%. Um, so he has really good explosive. He has really good speed. The biggest sort of thing about the flexibility, though, is when it comes to the three cone. Um, and this is the three cone thresholds. I had Miles Garrett. There's, he didn't have a three. He didn't perform a three cone. So just don't worry about that. Just worry about the sort of thresholds here. 100% uh, of multiple all-pro pass rushers. 100%. Uh, of those guys had at least a 711 or less three cone coming out uh, with 100% of Pro Bowl players having at least a 7.37 or less and when it comes to Pro Bowl players because Miles Garrett did not perform the three cone uh, or the short shell to really determine his flexibility I can't really project any way uh, with with a ton of accuracy about what his future will hold um, the only thing I can really say is that he has really good production and he has really good athleticism traits. Um, I mean, that's the basic things I can say is that he has he has those sort of things going for him. But without the three cone, you, you can see that it clearly is a blind spot in his evaluation. Uh, because if you don't have the three cone, you can't really be very specific in terms of what the potential is. Because 
uh, you know, let's say he doesn't have the all pro uh, three cone. You know, let's say he has a Pro Bowl three cone. Then I can't just say that he has all pro potential or Pro Bowl potential because I don't even know what that is. So um, that's the only real uh, sort of uh, question mark with Miles Garrett. And the Browns probably already know the three cone. I mean, that's the other thing, too, that, that you know, a lot of times we have. I mean, every year there's a prospect who doesn't do every single athleticism testing because a lot of times they do the testing with individual teams. Uh, and they don't really feel the need to have to do it in public because, you know, hey, he's Miles Garrett. He's going to be a top 10 pick. He doesn't, you know, if he doesn't feel the need that he needs to make his three count or short show public uh, because he wants to put the best foot forward, then that's not, you know, that's him. Uh, it's just that this is the only real blind spot in his evaluation to where I can't really say either way whether he has all pro potential or pro bowl potential because I don't have that three count. And as you can clearly see with the three count thresholds, it's a big deal. Uh, it, it's really big for, uh, for, for, for projection of pass rushers. And the fact that I don't have that three count uh, really kind of hurts how, to, how you uh, project him, what you ultimately can say about him in the future because he just didn't do the flexibility testing. So in conclusion, uh, what I can say about Miles Garrett is that he has very good production, as you already saw. I mean, he pretty much has Pro Bowl. He technically has, he hits all the sort of thresholds indicative of a Pro Bowl pass rusher, uh, and he's close enough to all pro ability that it isn't within, um, it isn't crazy to say that he has some potential to be an all pro player uh, because he's so close to the thresholds when it comes to SAC and TFL market here. Uh, and then, of course, when you get to his athleticism, great explosiveness, great speed for his size. But again, without the flexibility testing, I can't really say either way in terms of if he has all pro potential, pro bowl potential, or even starter potential. Uh, because again, without that three cone, um, I mean, I could easily, I could, I could say starter potential at the very least. But without that three cone, I really can't say either way about if he's going to be a multiple all pro player, multiple pro bowl player. There's a lot of things on paper that point towards the ability to be an all-pro player as well as a pro bowl player it's just without that three cone it really cloud it's a, it's a big blind spot and i don't feel comfortable projecting either way uh, because i don't have that information uh, so because of that that's really all i can say i i think miles garrett is a great player on film uh he was he's he's a very tremendous athlete obviously in terms of explosiveness and speed and i don't see anything um, you know, if you've seen my other analytics videos in terms of busts, he doesn't have any of the indicators that those guys had, uh, like Deion Jordan and all those other guys. Like, he's much more productive than Deion Jordan. He's much more productive than uh, Barkevius Mingo. You know, like, he, he doesn't really have any negatives like that. It's just that without the three count, it's really hard to project him. Uh, so, again, uh, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my work at draftcobra.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Geometrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Share this video as well with anybody that you know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.